Alright guys, so we're going to hit uh, problems 11, 12, let's see, uh, let's try to get maybe 15 and number 19 all in this video. So this is on your best math review, the best apes math review ever. Uh, again, committing this table to memory. Let's go ahead and get started on question number 11. So in question number 11, we're saying that there's 58,000 kilograms. So 58,000 is the same thing as 58 times 10 to the third uh, kilograms of solid waste. And we're trying to figure out what is it going to be in metric ton tons. So if we look metric tons to 2,000 pounds, okay, we don't quite have pounds yet. We're just stuck here with kilograms. So we have to start building some bridges here, okay? So if we have kilograms, how can we possibly get to pounds? Well, if we look just one over, we see that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds, okay? Since kilogram is going to be up here in the numerator, to cancel that out, we need to put it in the denominator, and we get 2.2 pounds. Now I'll show you guys a little trick, okay? We don't have to do it. We don't have to start with our calculations. We could continue on with this bridge, all right? So we said that there's 2,000 pounds, and we're going to put this in the denominator to cancel out, to one metric ton. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we could cancel out. 58 times 10 to 3 kilograms over 1 kilogram, we could cancel that out. 2.2 pounds over 2,000 pounds, we could go ahead and cancel that out. So in the end, we only really are dealing with two numbers. 58 times 10 to the third times 2.2. So that makes our calculations a lot easier. Oh, and of course, divided by 2,000. All right. So 58 times 10 to the third times 2.2 all over 2,000 metric tons. So we're halfway there. Remember, you usually get one point for the setup, and this is our setup right here, and one point for the correct answer. So now we just have to be careful not to make any mistakes. All right, so what, can, what else can we cancel out here? Well, this times 10 to the third is almost like this right here. You see all those zeros? How many zeros do you see? One, two, three. So this is like saying two times 10 to the third. Since this these are both 1,000, we could cancel that out as well. So now we just have 58 times 2.2 divided by 2 metric tons. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out this 2 to make it a 1, and this 2.2 to make it a 1.1. That way, it becomes, becomes a lot easier. All right. Now, you could do this mentally, 58 times 1.1, and you're going to get a, a pretty straightforward answer, which is 63.8 okay. metric tons. If you're confused how I did that mentally, well, what's 58 times 1? That's just 58. What's 58 times 0.1? Well, 1 tenth of 58 is just moving it over one decimal place, right? So this is the same thing as saying 58 plus 5.8, which again gives us our 6.3 metric. 6 or 6, 63.8 metric tons. Okay. All right, so our final answer is this. You usually get one point for the setup, one point for the correct answer, but make sure to include your units. All right. Uh, you could pause here, double check your work. I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this and move on to 12. So number 12, I put up a previous video, but it's not that great. I'm sorry, I did it during lunch tutorials. So we have one barrel of crude oil that provides 6 million BTUs of energy. So one barrel, 6 million BTUs of energy. How many BTUs of energy will one liter of crude oil provide? So if we have one liter of crude oil, how much is that out of a barrel? Okay. So one barrel, we said, is going to equal, in our chart, 42 gallons. So let's deal with 42 gallons instead. All right. So I have 42 gallons, which I'm going to abbreviate GAL. 
right? And for each liter, we have 0 0.3 gallons. Again, very critical when you're doing factor labeling that you're able to cancel these units out. Okay, so 42 gallons is then 42 divided by 0 0.3, okay? So what would we get here? We could, well, this is the same thing as saying 420 divided by 3. Okay, I just shifted both numbers one decimal place over. So we would get here 1 and over here 4, right? So 140. So there are 140 liters which is equal to 42 gallons, which is equal to one barrel. Now we said that there's 6 million BTUs, so 6 million, 6 times 10 to the 6 BTUs for every barrel that, of gas or crude oil that there is, okay? So, and we said one barrel is now equal to 140 liters, so if we wanted to figure it out per liter, all we'd have to do is 6 times 10 to the 6 divided by 140. Okay. And for this one, I gave the responsibility of finding the answer to you guys. All right. Again, you could pause here, but I'm going to move on to question number 15 in percentages. All right. In question number 15, it says if 35% of a natural area is to be developed, developed just means making it into a suburban, residential, or commercial area, or possibly an industrial area. Uh, this is going to leave 500 acres untouched. How many acres are to be developed? All right. So we have 35% of a natural area to, do, to be developed, leaving 500 acres untouched. How many acres are to be developed? All right, sorry about that. Um, my computer was running low on battery, so I had to replug it. Okay, so we were working on number 15. If 35% of a natural area is to be developed, leaving only 500 acres untouched, how many acres are to be developed? Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this problem. 35% is going to be developed. Alright, that leaves 500 acres undeveloped and we're looking for how many acres are going to be developed okay so this is kind of the setup of our problem we're trying to get comfortable with percentages right now you might remember something from like elementary school called cross multiply or maybe middle school elementary school might be a stretch okay so let's say 35 percent is going to be developed this means that how much of it is going to be undeveloped? So the proportion that's going to be undeveloped, well, that's just 100 minus 35, which gives us 65% undeveloped. So let's go ahead and set up our um, cross multiplication. So 65% undeveloped, how many acres did we say is going to be undeveloped? Well, we also said 500 acres. So let's keep those together on one side. undeveloped okay so undeveloped undeveloped we have 35 uh, percent that's going to be developed so how many acres undeveloped All right. so using cross mul multiplication we would get 500 times 35 percent divided by 65 percent now you could write this out as 35 over 100 divided by 65 over 100, but in the end you're just going to cross out these percentages, you're going to cross out those hundreds, right? So we get 500 times 35 divided by 65, okay? And remember that our final answer is going to be acres, and I'm going to leave it to you guys to try to get the right answer, all right? Now, when I did this, I was like, oh man, I don't want to do all this long division. I kind of did an approximation, okay? 
So you're, if you're off by 0.1 or so, I'll go ahead and accept your answer. All right. So the onus is on you to solve number 15. You can pause here, but I'm going to move on to problem number 19. So problem 19 is the last question that we're going to work on in this video. It asks, by how many degrees Fahrenheit can, temperature, can the temperature of one metric ton of water be raised with the addition of 110,000 BTUs of heat? Well, what is a BTU? I don't think we ever talked about it. It's there on your table, but it's there. But what it is, is British thermal units. And British thermal units is the amount of energy needed. So amount of energy needed to raise one pound of water, one LB of H2O, up one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, It's kind of like joules except for the standard system. Now joules has to do with how much um, energy it takes to raise one liter of water one degree Celsius. Okay, so it's kind of going by these singular units, except we're going to start using standard units here. So BTUs, amount of energy needed to raise one pound of water to up one degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so how much BTUs are we dealing with in the first place? Well, we're dealing with 110,000 BTUs and we're also dealing with one metric ton of water. Okay, So let's go ahead and write down both of those. 110 times 10 to the third BTUs over a volume of one metric ton. So remember one metric ton is going to be equal to 2,000 pounds. Now when we do our factor, factor labeling, metric ton, ton is on the denominator so what we're going to have to do is put that in the numerator. So we're going to have one metric ton is equal to 2 times 10 to the 3 pounds, right? 2,000 pounds. Okay. Now because of that, we could get, cross out our metric tons, and we know that BTUs is the amount of energy used to raise one pound of water up one degree uh, Fahrenheit. So we could just go ahead and do our simple division right here and now. Okay. So 110 times 3 over 2 times 3. Well, what can we cancel out? We could cancel out those times 10 to the 3. All right, I've given you guys way too much information, OK? So in the end, we're going to get degrees Fahrenheit, because that's what the question is asking, by how many degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're confused about, wait, Mr. T, BTUs and pounds, those aren't the same units. How did we get? Um, how did we get Fahrenheit? Well, BTUs, let's make this a side note, it's not an equal sign. BTUs are going to be pounds or degrees Fahrenheit over pounds, excuse me, over degrees Fahrenheit. No. Hold on one second. Alright, so I apologize about that. My math was getting a little sloppy, so let's go ahead and erase all of this. So we have BTUs, again, is one pound, and it's for degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, One pound degrees Fahrenheit. So when you divide BTUs over pounds, you get rid of those pounds, and all you're left with is degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a pretty simple one. I'm sure you guys could figure out the answer. 110 BTUs divided by 2,000, or 110,000 BTUs divided by 2,000 pounds gives us what? Okay. Um, hopefully you were able to get something out of this math review. Make sure that all problems are due next class. All problems are due next class.